Hi everyone, good afternoon, welcome to our webinar. I do just want to let you know we're going to wait another minute or so for everyone to be able to hop on and get all situated. So I'll pop back on in another minute. All right, good afternoon and welcome everyone to our webinar, Building a CSR Program That Really Matters. I'm your host, Marketing Specialist Nicole Kinchy, and today's presenter is Alice Korngold, CEO of Korngold Consulting. Today's webinar will be a short 30 minutes with time at the end for Q&A, um, but before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. After the webinar, you'll receive an email with a link to this recording, so feel free to download it and forward it on to a friend or a colleague if they weren't able to join us today. Also, we'll be posting this presentation on our resource hub, so if you haven't had a chance to visit our resource hub, I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, you can get there by going to www.foundations.blackbaud.com or directly through the Blackbaud website. Um, there's a ton of valuable information like this available. Also, feel free to use the Q&A widget on your screen at any point in time if you have questions, and then we'll be answering all the questions at the end of the webinar today. If we don't have time to get to your question, or if you think of a question later, feel free to email us at solutions at microedge.com, and we'll be sure to answer your question then. Lastly, don't forget the social conversation. You can access Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn right here during the webinar using the widgets on the screen. All you need to do is log into your social channel of your choice and include us in your post using at blackbaudcs. All right, and with that, let's get started. Alice, it's all yours. Thank you. Um, delighted to have such a tremendous audience today. And thank you to Blackboard and for hosting me and to Nicole in particular. Um, very excited about this topic. I'm going to move through the slides quickly so that we have time for Q&A. Um, but I want to tell you that all of the information that I'll be referring to um, is you can find in three resources, in addition to finding this webcast online, um, as Nicole mentioned. So one resource is Leveraging Goodwill, the first book I wrote. It's about strengthening nonprofits by engaging businesses. The second book, A Better World, Inc., How Companies Profit by Go Solving Global Problems Where Governments Cannot. And the third is a new study called Better World Leadership, measuring and documenting the leadership development value of nonprofit board service. And that's available online, free download at betterworldleadership.com. So you can find all of this information in those three resources. I'll repeat this at the end. Um, and that way I can move quickly and uh, answer questions at the end. So um, thank you again for joining us. As you know, this is about building a CSR program that really matters. Uh, those of us who've been working in this field for a few decades have seen the trajectory of change um, from philanthropy to strategic philanthropy to CSR. And we are at the point where CSR programs can truly be designed to help companies grow profits and shareholder value by finding innovative solutions to global problems and CSR programs that can help the company achieve its priority goals, which is what we'll be talking about today. Um, in particular, corporate goals for advancing diversity and inclusion, developing human capital for innovation, and advancing the UN Sustainable Development Goals by effectively preparing and matching their employees for nonprofit boards. So I'm gonna talk about building a CSR program for maximum results and measurable results. Um, as I mentioned, uh, most of us who've been 
working in this field for a while have seen the trajectory with with the movement from pre-1990, these are sort of general time frames, where philanthropy at companies was fairly random. Uh, it was often the interest of the C-suite or the corporate foundation that drove decisions about where contributions would be made. By 1990, we started to see a shift among leading companies to more strategic philanthropy. So uh, financial services firms investing their uh, philanthropy and even volunteerism in uh, financial literacy, um, ICT firms in STEM education, some very logical connections. I write a lot about that in my book, Leveraging Goodwill. By 2000, we're seeing a shift among leading companies with regard to CSR and in finding innovative solutions for companies and global, for communities and uh, in addressing community and global problems. So in um, the book, uh, A Better World, Inc., there are dozens of case studies that provide evidence that companies profit by solving global problems, social, economic, and environmental. And the reason I compare it to government and even nonprofits, where my, where my heart completely is with nonprofits, but what became evident from the case studies is that only multinational corporations have the global footprint, the resources, financial, human, technology, and market forces to be the major force in solving our world's biggest problems, and that, they, that this is profitable, um, and that the companies that are most effective in finding innovative solutions to global problems do three things well. They recognize this opportunity at the board level. They partner effectively with nonprofits, and they're effective in engaging stakeholders. Um, it's really, we're living in amazing times, um, certainly particularly challenging times, but uh, as most of you know, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, issued a letter last week to CEOs where he said governments are failing to prepare for the future. Society is turning to the private sector and asking companies to respond to broader societal changes. He talks about companies must ask themselves, what role do we play in the community? How are we managing our impact on the environment? Are we working to create a diverse workforce? Are we providing the retraining and opportunities that our employees and our business will need to adjust to an increasingly automate, automated world? So we're talking now investors who are looking to companies to solve global problems as a way to grow shareholder value, but to build a better world. So CSR programs are particularly well positioned to help companies address this. Um, another three things you'll, that will ring familiar, I believe, is Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, just recently um, is quoted in an article in The Guardian talking about, he says, more empathy means more profit. Who would think that corporate leaders would be talking about empathy? And MSCR, the provider of investment decision support tools for, for investors and companies, um, says one of the top five trends that will shape how investors approach risks and opportunities in the coming year will be talent quality. They say there will be leaders, followers and laggers, and that investors will distinguish between them, um, winners and losers in the race for human capital. Um, they talk about the focus on human capital is driven by the growth in artificial intelligence, with many routinized tasks becoming automated. People will be required to use higher level cognitive, creative, and social skills in their evolving role. And third, we see many studies that show that inclusive decision-making drives better corporate performance and gives a company a decisive competitive advantage. Uh, a number of studies, and they are referenced, by the way, in the Better World Leadership Study, betterworldleadership.com. Uh, Scott Page, a, a, a thought leader in this area, wrote a book about diversity producing bonuses leading to higher profits large market shares, and faster rates of innovation. So this is what companies are focusing on and their investors. You can't train 
I don't believe, for empathy, um, for an appreciation of diversity and inclusion. So the question is, how can companies maximize this potential? And I believe that your CSR program can become essential to your company's success, that as you design it, also build in an outcome measurement model that shows that you're driving your success for your company for its priority goals. And most companies, if you look at their annual report, letter from the CEO, letter from the chairman, you will see the word diversity and inclusion, that they're focusing on advancing workplace diversity and inclusion. You will see that they're developing human capital for innovation. You will see those words. And you will see that they are fostering economic development to advance the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the question is, how do you provide, how can CSR programs become invaluable, become essential, vital to companies by providing experience where training is not as effective in helping companies to achieve these goals, the value of experience, not training to advance diversity and inclusion, develop human capital for innovation, and foster economic development to advance the United Nations sustainable goals. Let me just uh, make sure. Okay. So, um, so I think what those of us, and I'm sure many of you on this call today, um, have been involved, uh, serve on nonprofit boards of directors, and have been involved in preparing people for nonprofit, business people for nonprofit board service, and matching them to boards. Um, I believe, and uh, it has been my work for three decades, and my writing, and my research, and my focus, and attention, and passion, that nonprofit board service must be the centerpiece of an effective CSR program. And alas, we were able to prove that to provide very serious evidence uh, documenting the leadership development value of nonprofit board service. Um, the companies that supported and participated in this were American Express, Dow, Hewlett Packard, HP, Johnson Controls, PIMCO, and Symantec. And within two weeks, we had completed responses to surveys from 957 employees uh, conducted interviews with dozens of employees, and Data Baran conducted um, big data trend analysis to support this. And I'm going to tell you what we learned, and you can also see all of these graphs if you download the report called uh, under uh, betterworldleadership.com. So you can download all of these graphs and have them for reference. There are also some one- to two-minute little videos that also – um, talk about these things. So number one, nonprofit board service, the results were so powerful that people, business people who serve on nonprofit boards gain a deeper appreciation of the perspectives of people from backgrounds different than their own and that they bring this back to the workplace. Um, they also develop greater empathy for people from different backgrounds than their own. Um, as I said, I'm going to go through these slides quickly now because you can reference them, but I want to focus on the themes. Um, when I mentioned that people develop an appreciation for diversity and inclusion as well as empathy, uh, it's important to point out that 81% of the people in the study serve with board members who have different backgrounds than their own, and 77% serve organizations with clients who have different backgrounds than their own. So this was the exposure. Uh, another really stunning result, outcome, as we studied the data more and more, there were uh, more revelations and aha moments. We compared the demographics of people who responded who serve on nonprofit boards to those who do not serve but are interested in serving on nonprofit boards. And lo and behold, we discovered that there are more people from diverse backgrounds that are interested in serving than those who already serve. That is, there are people in the wings at companies um, with greater diversity in terms of gender, age, and race, race and ethnicity. So more women, more millennials to bring youth perspective. I don't know if I should say that youth, but a younger perspective than the average board member uh, to the boardroom and people 
of different racial and ethnic backgrounds. So the opportunity is tremendous for companies to involve people with more diverse backgrounds on nonprofit boards of directors for leadership development. So that was powerful. We saw that uh, the second theme, developing human capital for innovation, that respondents reported developing an average of 6.7 leadership skills, including creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, strategic planning, very powerful opportunities for companies. We saw that 81% of of respondents advanced to board leadership positions. Uh, Again, a a powerful opportunity to develop leadership. Um, The vast majority of respondents, 95%, felt they could add value, and 97% said that the work of the organization was meaningful to them. And the next theme that we saw is that nonprofit board service is an opportunity for companies to foster economic development to advance the sustainable development goals. And we saw that 84% of board members contribute in at least four ways, including attending meetings, contributing. Um, In terms of fostering economic development to advance the SDGs, we categorize the nonprofits where they serve according to the SDGs. And as you'll see, um, the largest group serve on organizations whose missions relate to quality education and reduce inequalities, as well as sustainable cities and communities. Um, But many of the SDGs, as you'll see here, um, are being addressed through nonprofit board service. We also saw, um, when we asked, to what extent are these issues, SDG issues, clearer to you as a board member in terms of how these issues affect your community and your company. As you'll see, 64% of business people serving boards recognize, whoa, the importance of quality education affecting their community and that decent work and economic growth is uh, important to their company. So, again, you've got more data here, but you saw there's a greater awareness of the impact of these issues. Uh, On this slide, I want to focus on that 83% serve on local and regional boards. So they're having a tremendous impact in improving their communities and understanding their community needs. So what we concluded from this in the recommendations is that companies that seek to advance diversity and inclusion, develop human capital for innovation, and foster economic development to achieve the SDGs, need to train, match, and support business people for serving on nonprofit boards. The vast majority of respondents recommend nonprofit board service to their friends and colleagues. Um, We also saw that those who do not serve on boards but are interested, there were a number of factors that would help them become uh, more likely to serve, such as understanding what would be expected of them and the time demands, some training, and matching them to boards where there is a mutual interest. We see that um, 58% of the companies in the study, well, according to the employees who responded, said that their companies were providing financial contributions or sponsorships to the nonprofit boards where they sit. Um, only 24% said the company actually matched them to a board. 16% provided training. Uh, and, and yet respondents also report that board service builds goodwill for the company, enhances the reputation of the company, and provides opportunities for business relationships. We see with the idea that recruitment and retention is important to companies, Employees who are introduced to a board by their employer are more likely to stay at the company. Employees are more likely to work and stay at companies that introduce them to boards and provide training for board service. And employees are even more likely to work and stay at companies that introduce them to nonprofit boards and provide financial contributions to the nonprofits where they serve. So this is a tremendous tool to 
address recruitment and retention. So I'm going to summarize this by talking about the importance of setting goals for your CSR program that will really advance the company's priority goals to measure your results, as we did with our study, and we'll be doing more of this going forward, and report on your progress in these areas. Provide hard evidence. Uh, I mentioned three resources that have more of this information. Leveraging Goodwill is one book. It's available on Amazon, A Better World, Inc., and this study, which is also available on Amazon, and this study, uh, betterworldleadership.com, that was sponsored by six multinational corporations. Uh, we were supported also by the World Environment Center last year, and we will be um, partnering this year with Impact 2030, uh, whose mission is to, is to advance, uh, is to galvanize human capital to address the sustainable development goals. So we're very excited about this relationship. Um, many more companies will be joining us. We will be doing more studies. We will be doing convenings, including at the UN, and we will be doing webinars. So I welcome you to join us. Uh, I know that before I take questions, I know that Blackboard is interested in your answering this question, this survey, please if you're interested in learning more about CSR software and how it will help your company. Uh, so if you could answer that and submit it. And in the meantime, I achieved my goal for this, for this moment in time of uh, getting through the slides in time to be able to answer your questions. So bring them on, please. Ah, I see. Okay. I see the first question is, assuming we will get a copy of the deck, understand the need. So I understand, ah, yes, from Blackboard that the event will be available on demand, and you'll receive an email about it. And as I mentioned, all of these graphs are in the study that you can download for free. Uh, let's see. Um, I think... Those are the questions that have been directed to me. Let me encourage you all to, okay, talk more about how you did your goal setting. Do you have recommendations of where to start? Start at the top. I would do two things. Look at your company's annual report and the CEO and chair's letter to investors and shareholders. What do they say is most important to your company? The next thing I would do is talk to key people across the company in human resources, in business development, marketing, public relations, customer service, technology, and understand what are their priority goals. And then put together with that, how can our CSOR program help our company and people across the company achieve their priority goals? and how will we accomplish it, and how will we measure it to see how we're doing and iteratively improve what we're doing and track it and also show to the company the value of the CSR program to garner more support. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, let's see. Describe training um, for board service. Well, the um, Better World Leadership group that's going to move forward. These are corporations um, that will be participating in the coming year and years, I hope. We'll be having convenings and webinars and trainings um, about board service, uh, but I do address this in a lot of my blogs and in the book Leveraging Goodwill. And I, my belief is that you can do extremely effective training in short order that in 60 to 90 minutes, you can have a very uh, excellent training for business people to serve on board because they don't have time for more and it doesn't require more to get people up to speed. Um, and this is something I've been doing for decades, actually. And then there can be follow-up seminars uh, in addition. But uh, I think make it short and sweet and accessible for people. 
uh, let's see, um, significant, most significant barriers for people in serving on nonprofit boards. Um, let me look. I know I have a slide and there's a study on that. Um, but the majority of them, they want to know their concern is how much time will it take. And that is board specific, as those of you who are involved in this know. So it means doing needs assessments of nonprofits in the course of matching people to boards. So they understand not just how many meetings, but what are the challenges and opportunities facing this organization and the board in particular, and how might people from your company contribute if they serve on the board. Um, now, everyone I've, I've trained and placed over a thousand business people on nonprofit boards, every one of them says um, their priority is to add value. They want to be useful. Um, and what each nonprofit board requires is different. So people want to know what will be required of them. Um, they want training. They would like help in being matched. So I think those are the most important, and those are all doable. What was really exciting about this study is this is all doable. It's not rocket science. It can be done. Um, but that full graph with all of the issues that people noted, and yet 96% of them are interested in serving. So they just need some guidance. Um, so that uh, graphic is available on when this webinar is made available to you very shortly. Uh, on these slides, but also in the study that you can um, that you can download. Um, someone else asked about a typical budget for for year one CSR plan. It, you know, as with everything, it depends on what you want to accomplish. Uh, I, you know, and I would always say start with what you have. I'm an entrepreneur all my life. You start with what you have, and and no matter if you have a, a limited budget or a more extensive one, resources are always finite. What's most important is figure out what your company is most trying to accomplish. What would be a real win for your company? And how your CSR strategy can help your company to be successful. And, you know, I've built and run nonprofits uh, earlier in my career, and we always started small and then proved the value, and then you can grow it. So that's a matter of being very strategic and very focused and very particular about what you're going to use your finite resources for. And the same goes for when you have more resources. You still need to be very thoughtfully focused, um, set goals you can measure, and set up an outcome measurement model from day one so that you can prove your value, but also, very importantly, so you can plan iteratively. So you can say, ah, this is working better than this. We need to do more of this. This needs to be tweaked, um, and so on. So those, that would be my advice. Uh, let's see. Do you have a recommendation for a resource to build a justification to start a CSR program? Um, yes, it would be the three resources that I mentioned have make very clear and strong cases for a CSR program, how to do it, how to make the case to your company, and that would be in Leveraging Goodwill in that book, which was really written for that purpose. As you can hear, I'm passionate about this. I want to help make it possible for companies to do this well. Um, a Better World, Inc. is less about a CSR program, more about sustainability, but they are completely interrelated. And I would definitely download and read this study. Um, including the recommendations, um, and consider joining our efforts going forward where we'll pull companies together to share best, pra best practices, et cetera. Let's see. I think uh, significant barriers, budget, let me just see. I think those are the questions. They're fantastic questions, and I'm big on keeping to time. So I think we accomplished a lot. I appreciate your questions and your participation. I will turn it back to Nicole. Thank you so much, Alice. And again, if anyone in the audience, they have questions they think of later, uh, feel free to email us at solutions at mygrudge.com and we'll get back to you then. And again, I just want to thank you again, Alice, and thank you all for joining us today. This will conclude the webinar. I hope you all have a great rest of your week.